Right, for those of you who've got an old Nokia N8 lying around, uh, today we're going to do a video on how to refurbish one of these to make a bit of money. Because on the second hand market, these things still go for, you know, £100 or even more sometimes if they've been redone and they look nice. This is my partner's old N8. It's a bit beaten up now, but it still works fine. It's got a nice uh, 12 megapixel camera still. So I'm going to change the case on it. Uh, new screen protector, brand new battery, new firmware version which will factory reset it and uh, then we'll stick it on eBay see what we can get for it. They usually fetch, you know, like I say, around 100 quid if you make them look really nice um, which is about $170 so that's not bad really for an old phone. So yeah, we shall see what we can do. Okay, so what you'll need is the old N8, obviously, and I've gone for a nice uh, garish pink here because I did a research on, you know, what colours seem to sell best, and and the pink N8 seemed to sell better than anything else. Um, you know, seemed to fetch an all right price. So there's there's the new housing and all the bits to go, you know, I guess as bezels and all kinds of things there and uh, there's a brand new battery and then the tools that come with the kit in order to change the case so the next thing will be to dismantle the N8 okay so the first thing we we'll need to do is to remove the bottom cover um, I'll be warned that the tools they sent were actually too large, they weren't the right size. Um, hopefully if, if you order some you'll get the right size, but I've had to use one of my own tools here to fit a torque screw. Which is actually a, a T5, which they were supposed to send me, but I don't know they've sent me a T6 I think, and a larger one than that. Now, you should notice that the antenna assembly is in the bottom of this piece and with any hope the new case will have one in there but I've done this before and the case was not included so it didn't have one included so I had to remove the antenna from there and place it in the new one. Okay, so yeah, there's no, there's no switch and antenna assembly in there so I'll need to swap those over. Okay, so here is the antenna and button assembly. Um, I had stuck this down previously because this phone's already had a new case once before. So that may be glued in place. A bit of encouragement got that out. And this will now be placed into the new part. clicks into place so in the pack comes an, a replacement power button that matches the colour of the new case The new button is now in place. So the next thing we need to do is to remove the battery. Um, when you've got the bottom cover off, there's a little bracket here which you pop up like so. Remove, and there will be a piece of tape on the battery which you'll need to get hold of. This is stuck to the battery. And 
give it a pull. And there is the old battery. The new battery doesn't appear to come with any tape, which may make it hard to remove later on. So we might try and transfer the tape from here to the new, new battery. It just makes it easier for anyone changing the battery in the future to get it out more easily. So now we need to remove the screws next to the bracket where the battery was. They're not that tight, so when you do them up, don't do them up too tight. You might break it. Next we remove the HDI, HDMI port cover to reveal another T5 black screw. Remove this. Now next bit is to remove the top cover. Um, a lot of people have a problem with this because I've had the same problem. It's pretty difficult and you feel like you're going to break the phone trying to get it off. And some people get screwdrivers in here and try and you know and end up wrecking it and making indents on the casing. Um, I have seen a tip online where uh, you attach a bit of tape to here, loop it over, attach it to there, pull it together and it gives you something to pull on so we'll give that a shot. Preferably a wide piece of sellotape, but I've only got thin sellotape, so I'm going to go for parcel tape. It can obviously leave glue residue, but we're throwing this old case, so it doesn't matter. So here we have a piece of tape attached. The HDMI port is still open. You've got to make sure that's left open. Okay, so first attempt at that has not worked, but it's given me enough to be able to pop it off. I think with proper sellotape it's probably going to work better than that. The next thing we need to do is to remove the screen. Uh, to do this we remove these two screws. Um, also it's best to pop off the Wi-Fi antenna which is up here. And uh, once we've got the screen tilted down, there'll be two ribbon cables underneath that need popping out. And we'll carefully remove a little rubber gasket which is between the glass and the uh, secondary camera. They're the same as the uh, screws that were in the in the bottom, so it's not too much of an issue if we muddle them up. I recommend using a plastic tool in order to push the screen out. Okay, so I've managed to free the screen. Um, mine had some additional clips in the centre here, 
which uh, needed quite some encouragement. You've got to be very careful doing that because it's not very difficult to crack the whole screen. I was using this little wedge tool here, putting it down the side, prising it and sliding it up and down and it eventually popped one of these clips in the centre there. So be careful with that because you can easily break the screen and that will wreck the whole thing. So here we just want to pop these cables off. And uh, the screen is now free. And this is the part we want to replace. Okay, so uh, sadly it appears that the digitizer is glued in with extreme strength into the bezel here which needs replacing, it's too scruffy to sell like that um, and the only way to remove it is to use a heat gun get it really hot which I feared would wreck the ribbon cable attaching to the digitizer, maybe it's fine but I didn't want to use that approach so I tried to prise it very carefully but due to the differences in force I freed it from here but it was still very stuck it's caused a slight crack in the digitizer so I'm gonna to have to go ahead and order another digitizer basically so that's a big pain that's gonna knock some of the uh, profit off um, but I'll have to do that so I can continue this and make sure I finish it so I'll just continue to build the phone without the screen in place and then when a digitizer arrives I'll put the screen in and put it into the phone so yeah we'll continue okay so now we need to remove these two screws and also this black one up here um, they are going to be T6 so slightly larger Possibly one of Okay, so at this point, these little metal clips can come out at the side. They don't have to, but they, they fall out sometimes. We can just clip those back in afterwards. Okay. Now you may have noticed that when I took it apart, these black nuts came flying out. Um, I've managed to suss out where they come from, basically it's where you undo the side of the case here, they, they, f they just sit in place. Okay, so now we need to remove the loudspeaker here. Uh, best to do the plastic piece because it's magnetic and uh, it may stick to your screwdriver So to remove the camera flash, you have to prise it from this end with a screwdriver to release the clip. Like so. 
So uh, under the loudspeaker of the old case was a, uh, a little felt grill which I've also picked out of here so that we can place it into the new casing. So we have the loudspeaker and flash now in the new case. Um, you might want to note that the terminals for the loudspeaker are outermost when you place it back in. Um, I had to use a little bit of double sided sticky foam to get that to stay in properly because I didn't want it rattling around afterwards. The case came with an, uh, an additional flash lens but the flash lens is fine in the existing one and it was quite stuck on there so I just left that so we can abandon the replacement lens. So the next thing we need to do is put all the new buttons into place in the housing and then put this piece in to keep them in place. Oh, okay look, there will come a time where <laughs> you need to try and fit these buttons in the side. Um, the, the plastics that came with this case are shocking, absolutely shocking, completely useless. Um, I come close to putting it in the bin because it's so unworkable but the existing case, all these plastics are severely glued in here, There's, I can't get them out. Um, I tried to, one of them broke. Um, basically you have this this piece here with the two sides and then you have two very small thin pieces which go in between this black piece and up against the side and they hold all the buttons in and they're very delicate arrangements of tiny, barely any tolerance, room for any tolerance and uh, the parts that are made are, are completely useless so they just fall out, they don't fit properly whatsoever um, I had to use the old button, the old slide button from the previous case because the slide button it comes with is useless, it doesn't even have the actual connection to grab onto the micro switch so that's pointless um, <clears throat> I managed to just about get them in and I used a bit of double sided foam to stick it in and for one on this side I managed to get the side runner out of here and I, I've kind of got it in there so I'm going to put the flash in now Okay. Right, I've managed to get the uh, motherboard in place now. Um, I think the buttons seem to be working. It really is the problem of these plastic runners that come... My advice would be, when you're dismantling the old phone, do your absolute best to remove the plastic runners, the little brackets that run up the side here, they're not attached to this piece that's heavily glued in. They are glued in, but they're removable because they're a darn sight better quality than the ones it comes with. Um, the one, you know, I managed to bodge one of them in with some tape, the one it came with, and the other one I used, one from the old phone. And uh, it's very, very tricky to get the brackets in place, holding everything in place while putting the board in but it is doable, I just really advise you try to use the existing plastic brackets from the old phone because the tolerance is, although it looks identical when you put them next to each other it's it's not as rigid plastic, it just doesn't it doesn't hold things in place, I'm not convinced these are going to stay in place, maybe they will but you know I don't I don't really reckon but uh, you have to uh, pay attention when you put the board in that you line up the micro switch for the screen lock slider with the actual switch otherwise you could break the switch or it just won't work so pay attention to that when you put that in
Okay, so that took some serious encouragement, um, mainly because of the aftermarket plastic runner that I was banging on about was protruding, sticking out where I had to use some tape to stick in, so I, I had a bit of a tricky job getting that in, but um, it seemed to work. Okay, so I've, I've put the LCD away for now because I'm waiting for a new digitizer, and I'm going to screw the old one on just to just to keep the thing together for now. And then when I when a new one arrives, I'll have to take it apart to this this far and replace the digitizer and and refit the screen. Okay, so I've I've also clipped the. Uh, Wi-Fi antenna on on the top there. I think we can go ahead and put the battery in. Right, nah. that's the phone fully assembled, bar the uh, screen and a new digitizer. HDMI port fits, but it could be better. Let's just hope that this, uh, well, we'll see if it all works when the screen arrives. Right, so that is the phone build now complete. Uh, it's fully been refurbed and reflashed. I've got some little accessories here. So uh, yeah, we'll take a closer look. So first of all, we have the phone here. I've got a little uh, cheap pouch off eBay. I think I've got like five of them for 99p or something. It's just a nice little addition. Makes it look a bit nicer. Here's the uh, phone itself. Annoyingly, the uh, replacement digitizer that I got for it, um, they covered the logo up. That's not removable, which is that's a bit of a pain, really. If you see here, just focus that. So yeah, they've covered the Nokia up, mark up with that for some unknown reason. <clears throat> Here it is running with the new flashed operating system. The, uh, the, the quality isn't remarkable. Hang on. The quality... The quality isn't remarkable, but it's acceptable. 
So there's a little little mark there which isn't great, but I can't get rid of that very easily. Um, but yeah, I think I'm generally pretty happy with that. It all works fine. Uh, so keep that in there. Uh, I've got a phone case here. I think that was probably about 99p as well. Uh, you know, looks looks nice. Goes with the. I mean, they're all pretty girly colours: pink phone, turquoise case, flowery phone cover. The usual charger. Picked this up too for five quid. Um, this is a car charger and FM transmitter in one. We got it to use in the car. We didn't really actually get around to using it much but it's brand new so I may as well throw that in as well and then here's the headphone adapter I don't actually have the headphones anymore but so yeah we'll chuck this lot on eBay and uh, hopefully it will fetch something and that will be uh, bringing an old phone back to life